Welcome to Good Spirit Graphics and part three of our Mocha Blend tutorial series. We're going to cover what you can do with Mocha data in the 3D view and also what you can do without Mocha data in the 3D view when you're using Mocha Blend. Now we could go back to the default 3D view but we want to see Mocha Blend, so we're going to have to set up our own layout here by splitting the window. Let's drag this little hatch marked area into itself and go ahead and set our split window to 3D view. Now we're going to close down this little tools panel. We don't need it right now. You can do that either by dragging it shut or by pressing T on your keyboard. You'll notice we have screencast keys on, so you can follow along what keys I'm pressing. Now in the 3D view, we also like to have an outliner window. So let's split our properties panel by dragging down into itself. There you go. And changing this window type to outliner. Now we can see what's in our 3D view, which currently is empty. Now, if you're familiar with other applications like After Effects, you'll know the default camera is a 2D orthographic camera and in Blender, we don't have one of those set up automatically, but I designed Mocha Blend for people who aren't familiar with Blender. And to make it easy on you, all you have to do is press Create 2D Camera. It will create a 2D camera, which we can move into by pressing on the number pad zero. And there is our 2D orthographic camera all set up for you. It is positioned, so zero, zero is at the lower left corner. That keeps it consistent with the usual 3D world. It's opposite After Effects, which has zero up at the upper left, but I think it makes more sense to keep it here. Now, all the settings will be done for you. It will be positioned correctly. The camera settings, if we select it, will be set up with the particular lens type and the orthographic scale, which is equivalent to a uh, zoom or field of view for a 2D camera. Now, it's not that easy to calculate this number for obvious resolutions. It might not seem like a big deal, but if you have odd pixel aspect ratios, or if you have non-standard dimensions where Y is greater than X, um, calculating the lens settings uh, can be a bit tricky. So if you already have your 2D camera set up and you make any changes to these things, you'll see a notice here telling you the 2D camera lens settings are incorrect. So let's go ahead and press reset 2D camera and it will get positioned again correctly with 00, zero at the lower left and our lens settings will be updated as well. This makes it real easy to set up any format you want just at the press of a button. Now Mocha Blend checks to see if you have a camera created. That's why Create 2D Camera is grayed out right now. All you can do is reset the existing camera. So I want to show you something first. We're going to delete this camera and we're going to move around a little bit in our view so we can see what's going on here. Let's press keyboard five to move out of perspective mode. And we're going to start with a new camera at a scale of a thousand to one. Now all the Mocha data that's brought into the 3D view has to be scaled according to the 3D world. That way it will match up with the camera settings and with the objects you may create. So if we create a new camera at a thousand to one scale, you'll see it is quite small here. It will line up if we press keyboard zero, you'll see the bottom left falls right on the X and Y axis. And once we create it, we can't create another one. To create another camera, you need to go into the object settings and change the name of the existing one. We'll call it Mocha Blend Cam 1. Now, Mocha Blend will let us create another camera. So let's do one at 100 to 1. We'll move out a little bit first. You see, we get a larger camera. It is also positioned correctly on the X and Y axes. We'll go ahead and select this camera, change its name 
So we can create another one just to show you how the scaling works. You see this one's getting quite large. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. Change it to three, put our scale at one to one. And I think we selected the wrong camera. We need to select the largest one, change that name. Let's see, change it to something else, just so Mocha Blend won't see it. And we'll create another 2D camera, and this gets quite large. Normally working in here, I like to stick it on either 100 to 1 or 1,000 to 1. There may be some reason why you want to move to a really large scale, but for most of the time, you don't need to. So let's go ahead and select all our cameras. Let's delete them all and go back to Mocha and export some tracking data. Here in Mocha, we have another animation. It is a blue triangle that moves up, rotates 45 degrees, and goes back down to the other side of the frame. I've already tracked it. If we highlight the layer, you'll see this is the search area. Now we're going to, going to export tracking data to Mocha Blend. And let's try to align our tracking data by taking a look at the surface. The center of the tracking data will be the center of this rectangle. So let's go ahead and align this right with our footage. That way we'll know if things are exported correctly into Mocha Blend. Now this should be the point right at the center of the triangle that we're going to export. Let's select Export Tracking Data. After Effects Transform Data, that's good, it's already there. And hit Copy to Clipboard. Now let's paste the data into Mocha Blend. All right, it looks like we have Transform Data, good. Frame range 1 to 10, 10 frames. Here's our format, 1500 by 720. 24 frames per second with square pixels. Now it says we have a Mocha render mismatch. That is due to the settings being different. We also have no Mocha Blend camera. So let's go ahead and create another one. Set our scale to 100 to 1. Create 2D camera. And you'll see, if we zoom in a little bit, we'll see it. Now we can go ahead and press keyboard 0 to look through the camera. Then we're going to move our 3D view over a little bit for a second. So we can go ahead and enter our footage into the movie clip editor here. There's two ways to do it. You can press open and then go navigate to your file. Or Blender supports drag and drop. So let's go ahead and take the video file. Just pick it up from another folder and drop it in here. And you'll see it will load it. I'll press the home key to center things up a little bit. There you go. And this opens up some more options for us here. We're not going to be doing any tracking, so we're going to shut all of these things down for now, except we're going to take a look at clip. Set as background, set scene frames. It's the first one we want. We have 10 frames, so let's go ahead and hit set scene frames. That changed our timeline and our settings for our render settings to a start frame of 1 and of 10. We can mouse wheel scroll this thing up a little bit here. And you can see we're starting on frame 1 and ending on frame 10. Now the second thing we want to do is slide this back over. Let's go take a look at our 3D view. We're going to first import the settings into Blender because we have a mismatch here. So import Mocha format. We'll need to reset our 2D camera to the new format. And if we have the 3D window open, we can go ahead and load the clip that's in here into the 3D view by pressing this button, set as background. This only works if you have the 3D view visible. There we go. Now we have our footage in our 3D view. And if we zoom out both of these so we can see both of them equally well, you'll see they are both synchronized. 
Now let's clean things up a little bit. We don't need this window anymore, so let's go ahead and close this up. And we can either scroll Mocha Blend back up, or we can grab the panel. These are floating panels. We can go ahead and bring that back up to the top. That'll push everything else down. Second thing we can do is if we open up our properties panel here, either by pressing this little plus sign or by pressing in on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and close down some of these things. Under background images, we have our opacity set so we can see our grid. If you don't want to, you just want a solid background of the footage like this, go ahead and raise this up. Shut that off and you'll see your footage will now look the same in the 3D view as a camera background as it does in the movie clip editor. Now we're ready to create a transform empty, but before we do, let's look at one important difference between working with Mocha data here in Blender as opposed to After Effects. In After Effects, you set your timeline where you want your data to be pasted into. In Mocha Blend, we're going to use a different system. We're going to look at the footage settings here, and you'll see there is a start frame listed. This is the start frame of the footage, but it also applies to data that exists connected to this footage. So if we set a start frame of three or four, for example, you'll see our footage won't start moving till we reach that offset of four frames. And here we go, four frames offset, and our footage is moving. So that will be the point where our data is pasted in. So if you want to offset your footage and your data, go ahead and set it here. Don't worry about this timeline setting. Let's collapse this panel, expand our 3D view. We'll go ahead and press home to zoom our camera and create a transform empty by pressing this button. Now you see our transform empty appeared here. We'll go ahead and select it so we can see it a little bit better. Now if we move our footage, you will see our transform empty is moving along with our triangle. And you'll notice not only is it moving with it, it's also rotating along. So it's getting translation and rota rotation. Transform Empty shows up here in the Outliner. And if we go to the Object Properties tab, you'll see nothing appears to be set with keyframes here because Mocha Blend was designed to paste its data into the Delta Transform offsets. So you'll see you can make changes in some of the other objects' location settings, and it won't affect the keyframes. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Now, empties don't render in Blender. They're equivalent to nulls in After Effects. You just store data in them. So what we're going to do is attach something to it. Now, you'll see this little uh, circle here. That is our 3D cursor. And you can see if we mouse click around in here, I have the standard Blender settings where left mouse click moves this, right mouse click selects objects. You can reverse it if you'd like in the user settings. When you create new objects, it creates them at the position of the 3D cursor. So I'm going to move this 3D cursor to our empty, which is selected by doing Shift S, cursor to selected. Now when we create an object, it will be at the exact location of our empty here. So let's create, you guessed it, a Suzanne monkey. We're going to go ahead and rotate it along the x-axis. Let's just say, let's say minus 90 degrees, make it exactly facing the camera. We'll go ahead and press Control 2 to add a subsurf modifier to it. And it's positioned here, but as you can see, it's not going to move with it yet. We need to parent it to the empty. There's two ways to do that. One is to select the object you want to parent first, and then select the object you want to parent to last. The last object you select becomes what's known as the active object in Blender. The other way to do it, which I kind of prefer, is simply just grab this little icon for the Suzanne and drop it right on the transform empty. Now you'll see it belongs 
in the tree of the transform empty. And if we move our timeline, it's moving now with our triangle. And you'll see it's not just moving, but it is also rotating. Now I just noticed that our screencast keys display is off, so you can't see which keys I'm pressing to make all the magic happen here. So let's go ahead and turn it back on. Now you'll be able to follow along with the keys I'm pressing. For example, if I press keyboard R, all right, you'll see an R pops up there. We can rotate around here. If we press X, we rotate on the X, Y on the Y axis, and Z on the Z axis. If I right click, we'll just undo it, put it back where it was. This allows us basically to move our object around. And let's go ahead and press double R, which allows us to enter a different rotation mode here. If we position our Suzanne looking slightly up. Now our monkey will move and hold its orientation. Now if you're doing motion graphics, an orthographic camera which renders 3D objects very flat is fine, and it may be okay for the look you want, but we have the option of actually switching our camera to a perspective camera and then adjusting either using the focal length settings, uh, excuse me, the, yeah, the focal length settings or the field of view settings to position our object. You can just eyeball it back into place. And you'll see it appears to be facing off to the side. That's because our camera is essentially centered. Now, if we move it, you'll see the perspective is going to change quite a bit. Move it to the right side of the frame. Now it's looking that direction. So you can adjust the amount of perspective you get using this method and achieve a very different look. Now, another way to do this, if you want more or less perspective in your shot, what you'll need to do is select the camera, go to object settings, unlock the Z location of the camera. Mocha Blend creates objects and cameras like this with their transform locks all on. Then go ahead and change the Z location of the camera. We can move it way out. Then go back to our camera settings, adjust our field of view, put it approximately back where it belongs, and we'll get a very different perspective look. This one is like having a much longer lens, so you'll see the perspective shift is quite reduced. Now we'll go ahead and reset our camera. This will put our lens settings back where they belong. It won't change the Z location of the camera. That's irrelevant actually with an orthographic camera. It doesn't matter where your Z settings are on your camera. So if you want to keep them to switch back and forth between different views, go ahead and hit reset 2D camera. Now let's take a look at another animation. Here's another triangle. We have 30 frames this time. This one is scaling, so you'll see part of it goes out of frame. Now, planar trackers are great for this because if you try to use point trackers, you can't track things that move out of frame. Mocha does a great job of this sort of thing. And you'll see it locks on all the way across the length of the footage. Let's go ahead and export this tracking data to Blender now. Now let's paste this data into Mocha Blend. There we go, we got 30 frames. And let's go ahead and change out our clip because we're working with a different clip this time. So I will drag and drop from a folder straight in here. Let's see if it loaded it. Uh, okay, it is scaling this time, correct. But we don't have 10 frames anymore. So let's go down to our clip settings. Let's set our scene frames. There we go, we have 30. And let's see, I think if we press home with our cursor here, yeah, all right, that will expand our timeline. Now we also have to reset the clip in the 3D view. See, it's still using the original clip. So let's go ahead and hit set as background. There we go. Now we have the scaling clip. All right, we'll expand our 3D view. 
we'll go ahead and get rid of this. We could either hide it or get rid of it. But we're going to go ahead and get rid of it by pressing delete or X in the main view. Now let's create another transform empty. And we'll go ahead and take our Suzanne again, parent it to the new one, and see what we get. Ah, there you go. We have now absorbed our scaling data into our Suzanne. So this is one great feature you're going to get with Mocha Blend. You'll have the ability to use translation, rotation, and scaling transform data on 3D objects right inside Blender. Now let's take a look at some corner pinning and how we might use it in a 3D app like Blender. We have a handheld shaky shot here that Mocha excels at tracking. And you'll see we have a picture frame that starts out of frame, moves across our view, and moves out of frame to the left. Now when it moves back into view, you'll see as we run backwards through the footage, we have a lot of reflections. We want to keep these reflections. We don't want to just put an insert over them. That will look very artificial in our final shot. So we're going to blend these reflections in with our insert footage in the compositor. Now I've already tracked it for us, so we don't have to waste too much time in Mocha. There's plenty of good tutorials on how to do tracking like this. We'll go ahead and turn on overlays and you'll see just quickly I have set up a spline that covers the outside of the frame and we exclude the inside of the frame. We don't want to track the reflections. If we turn on mats you'll see what we're actually tracking here. So let's turn that off, turn on our surface, turn off our outlines here and you'll see this is what we're going to export in our data to Blender. These four corners will be exported and we'll use those to do our insert shot. And you'll see they move very nicely with our footage. When they disappear out of view, like right here, that's because we've set our layer in and out positions. these layer in and out positions are going to transfer into Blender. Okay, let's go take a look in Blender by exporting After Effects corner pin only. That's what we want. Let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard and go take a look in Blender. Now let's go ahead and paste our data in. And you'll see we get a corner pin icon here, Mocha corner pin data loaded, frame rate 25 to 291, 267 frames. We get our format data. We get a Mocha render mismatch because we haven't set things up for these settings. So let's go ahead and import Mocha format. And then you'll see we get a 2D camera lens setting error. So let's reset our 2D camera to these current settings. And you'll see we're good to go. Now. When we want to work with footage in here, the quickest way to do it is to simply drag and drop your footage into the movie clip editor. So I'm going to drag from another folder the video that we used in Mocha to track, drop it in here. And like before, let's go ahead and set scene frames to match. There, now we're up to the full length of the video. Let's go ahead and slide this over, take a look in our 3D view, click set as background, and you'll see our video is now moved into the camera view background. We can also hover our mouse over the timeline, press home, and you'll see it will match our current frame range. Now you'll notice that our view here shows our grid lines through our footage. You may or may not want that. In this case, we really don't. So let's go ahead and go down to where our background image is set for the camera. We'll go ahead and raise this up all the way there with opacity at 1.0. 
now we don't see anything through the footage. We'll see everything we put on it, but we won't see our grid lines showing through the camera background. Now let's take a look back up here. You'll see we have our data loaded. We're all set up to do some kind of an insert. So let's go ahead and move our cursor over so we can see our picture frame. And we're going to hit the create corner pin plane button. There we go. The corner pin plane is created. A background is created for it in default blue here. That is simply a material. If we right click on it, you'll see we have a mocha surface material that's created automatically. These yellow vertical lines down here represent the keyframes for our corner pin. And you'll see if we move our timeline around, it is matching our Mocha data perfectly. There now, if we zoom out a little bit, just middle mouse wheel scroll out a little bit, and you'll see that it moves off out of frame nicely and then disappears. It disappears because we're using our layer in out settings from Mocha. And you'll see here we have a keyframed visibility and render setting here. That's what makes our corner pin disappear on both ends. That keyframe range is set right here. Now let's insert an image into our corner pin plane. We'll take a look at the wireframe here by moving into wireframe mode. And you'll see we have a subdivision going on here. That is because Mocha Blend sets up your material and some modifiers. One is the multi-res modifier, which prepares your plane for displaying an image more accurately in some applications. Now there's a couple of ways of putting an image in here. Um, we're going to first set our rendering engine to Blender Render. When we're just trying to do a picture insert like this, we don't really need a uh, renderer like Cycles. In fact, we really don't want it because of the noise. We want Blender Render. It renders pictures like this more accurately. Uh, we can go ahead and flip into texture mode. Go over to our texture tab for our property. Uh, let's see, we're on Mocha Surface. Okay, now click on texture tab. We'll go ahead and add a new texture. We can set this to image or movie, scroll down to open an image, and I have an image picked out that we're going to use here. Let's put James Dean in here, and you'll see there he is. Now we have a couple more settings we need to put in place before it will appear in the 3D viewport. Let's go ahead and go back to the Material tab. You'll see our image here doesn't look quite right. Let's make it flat first of all so we can see it better. And let's turn off Transparency. Alright, that looks good. Now it's still not here because our 3D viewport shading is not set to GLSL. So let's set it there and you'll see our image magically appears. Now you'll see if we go down to our timeline and move it around, our image is perfectly inserted into our picture frame. Now this is the hard way. Let's do it the easy way. Let's go ahead and make sure it is selected. We'll press the delete key. Get rid of our plane. And we're going to now go to one of the import add-ons. If you don't see images as planes set up, Go ahead and activate this in the user settings. Go ahead and pick an image here. Let's go back to where we were before. And let's see, I think if we click on one of these, we can see our pictures. Yeah, here we go. This time we're going to pick this image, which you'll see in a minute. Looks a little different. Now there's a couple options for this add-on, import images as planes. Um, let's see, we're going to 
pick shadeless because we want it to render without having to put any lights in our scene. And we don't have any alpha here, so we don't have to fool around with any of this. Let's go ahead and hit import. And you'll see it popped up right over here. Now that doesn't do us a lot of good. You'll see it's not doing anything over there. But as it is selected, we will go ahead and click on apply corner pin to plane. Now when we do so, Mocha Blend is going to apply all the tracking data onto this plane. Now this plane is set up all ready for you to go with a material. It is UV unwrapped. And you'll see this time, James Dean doesn't have a cigarette. I photoshopped it out because a lot of you will be asking, well, why do we need to do this in the 3D view of Blender? Well, if we want to combine some other things, like maybe some real smoke, a real 3D object, like a real cigarette, we can't do that in a compositor easily but we can do it in a 3D view. In an upcoming tutorial, I'll show you how to set up this scene, but briefly, you'll see we have our corner pin plane moving through our scene, but we also have a 3D cigarette that if we select and move out of camera view, you'll see is actually protruding through our plane, and it is moving along with our plane using some tracking data along with the corner pin data from Mocha. We've also added a smoke simulation rig to it that includes some wind to guide our smoke. And this whole rig also moves along with our Mocha tracking data. There's one more thing we can do with corner pin data in the 3D view, and that is create corner pin empties. So let's go ahead and click that. And you can't see them very clearly, but if we right click and hold down shift so we select them all, you'll see that what we've done is put an empty, keyframed it, and as you see, it tracks along with our plane. This can be useful for parenting objects too, and performing some other tricks that we'll look at later.